Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name's Stephanie and we are back with another installment of my favorite color series. Today I'm going to be going over my favorite browns and beiges. So I knew I wanted to do my favorite browns video, especially once I remembered November is like the month for brown polish, at least for me as a seasonal wearer. But I did get a couple of requests to see some of my favorite like neutrals or nudes, and I surprisingly don't have that big of a selection, but I figured I can still include the ones that I have. So without further ado, let me just show you my favorites. The first polish is Holo Taco's Espresso Your Holo from the Holo Barista bundle earlier this year. Or more recently, you might remember this from my fall favorites video. This is a super rich espresso brown in Holo Taco's new crushed holographic formula, which is basically like a very fine but super dense holo flaky in a jelly tinted base. And because the base in this one is super dark and pigmented, it pretty much looks full coverage on the first coat but there are some light or squishy spots so I just needed a second coat to fully cover them up and this is fully opaque and yeah I absolutely adore this one I know in some lightings this can be one of those shades that is so dark it looks black but honestly I will give this one a pass Next is Mooncat's Stumped, and this is from the Lost in a Folktale collection from earlier this spring. It's a dark brown jelly filled with iridescent flakies that glow from gold to orange and green, and uh, it is just so, so gorgeous. I shared this recently in my best of series where I talk about my brand favorites, kind of in preparation for upcoming Black Friday sales. But yeah, this one is just absolutely breathtaking with those flakies. Because this is in a jelly base, it is going to be pretty sheer, especially on the first coat where I didn't grab enough polish. So it was a little sketchy looking, but this evened out nicely on the second coat and it is just absolutely stunning. Look at how those flakies glow. Oh my gosh, I just love the shade. The next brown I have is Zoya's Tasha, which I shared in part two of my favorite shimmers video a couple weeks ago. This one is technically a metallic, but I still love it either way. So this is described by Zoya as a sensual brunette brown metallic. And maybe it's a weird thing to say, but I totally agree with that description. I just think there's something so alluring about this shade. It is absolutely stunning whether on its own or in some nail art and I love the one coat formula. Up next is Mooncat's Kafka-esque and this is from their Tale of Five Lacquers that either launched late last year or January of this year. I don't fully remember but I do remember I didn't love the rest of the collection or the formulas in them. They were just a little bit on the crelly side but this one was so rich and creamy it literally felt like painting my nails with chocolate. It is just such a delicious brown. Another brown cream that you know I love is OPI's Brown to Earth, and this was from last year's Fall Wonders collection. Ever since this one came out, I have just been on this brown kick, especially with the deeper dark browns. I don't know what it is about them. I know some people kind of find them boring or maybe not flattering, but I think they are just so striking, so elegant. I know this one might look a little bit too similar to the last shade, but they definitely are very different. I would say Brown to Earth is a little bit more on the cool side, while Kafka-esque is a bit more on the neutral, maybe even yellowy kind of undertone. This next one is probably the newest brown in my collection. This is Shapeshifter from Island P's Fright Night collection this past Halloween. This is another dark brown jelly base, but this one is filled with these super tiny copper metallic microflakes that I am just so enamored by. 
I feel like they just add so much warmth. I mean, the base is already on the warmer side of brown, but those little copper flakies just add such a beautiful glow. And they look so cool, especially once you layer them on the second coat. They just have this really beautiful layered effect. Some of them pop out a little bit more than others. It is just absolutely stunning and a surprise favorite from that collection. I regret not including it in my best of. So now moving into some more mid-tone browns, but still on the cooler side. This first one is Olive Ave's Volcanic from their Rock Solid collection that launched last winter, which was their line of neutrals. And this one immediately stood out to me with its cool, almost gray kind of undertone. It just looks and feels so cool for the season, especially since I normally crave warmer browns. This one is so refreshing. Another cool tone brown that I adore is Warm Mocha Latte by Noodles Nail Polish. This is another oldie in my collection, so sadly it's not around anymore, but it's definitely a really unique brown in my entire collection. As you can see, this has a super cool gray, almost taupey kind of undertone to it. It just looks so, so cool, and I love the shimmer in here. It kind of has a little silver shimmer, but there's also these iridescent pops of blue and purple. They don't stand out too much, granted, since this is a pretty opaque and pigmented base, but they add just enough sparkle that is so, so pretty against the base color. While this color is not what I normally would think of when it comes to a warm mocha latte, I still feel super cozy wearing it. And even though this isn't an exact dupe, there is a shade in her shop called Moonlight Magic that kind of looks like the warm version of this one. And the last dark and cool tone brown that I have is Sinful Colors Nirvana, which I remember buying so randomly at a Walgreens in 2014 or something. This was my first cool tone brown that I ever had in my collection, and I would only wear it like once a year, but it just would hit the spot for me. I feel like it gives a sort of grungy kind of color or something, and I just think it looks so, so cool. I don't have that many sinful colors in my collection anymore, but this is one I just can't get rid of. I think the color is super unique and super flattering, and it's a shame it's not readily available anymore. I did remember I had Essie's Slay It though, and I thought it was kind of going to be a dupe, but unfortunately it's a lot lighter and even more gray leading. I guess Nirvana does have a bit of a yellow sort of undertone, but yeah, unfortunately not dupes. So now onto the warmer mid-tone browns. The first one I have is Mooncat's Boa Constrictor from their Heavy is the Crown collection from last year. But I did share this one recently in my best of Mooncat video because it's one that I absolutely love. And I know that there are a few brown hollows on the market now, but this was my first one and it's still my only one because I can't justify getting another one when I have this. It is just such a perfect shade of brown in my opinion and I love the formula on this. It's so full coverage and easy to work with. Obviously super sparkly. The hollow is not going to be popping off the the way it would in sunlight but it's still beautiful in indirect lighting or low lighting there's also a gold shimmer in here Ugh, i love this one Next, I have Hollow Taco's Fairy Tale, which is from their Magnetic Magic collection last winter. This was such a standout for me in that collection because up until that point, I don't think I had ever seen a brown magnetic before, and I just thought this one was so, so beautiful. I just love the contrast of the dark brown base and then this lighter gold to copper kind of shimmer, as well as that dainty hollow sparkle. It's just so so pretty and so cozy. I don't know why, but this shade just kind of reminds me of like a plush teddy bear for some reason. I have really been loving this one so, so much. So when it comes to magnetics, you guys probably know that I prefer doing a velvet effect with them, but I actually didn't really like it with this shade. I think because the formula is just a bit on the thicker and more opaque side, it was kind of hard to get the magnetic shimmer to move where I wanted it to. Some of it set before I finished moving it. So it just didn't really give me the full effect that I wanted. I can see it still kind of looking cool though, almost like a tiger's eye sort of vibe. But yeah, this is one that I prefer with the cat eye. 
Next, I have another holo taco. This is holo cappuccino from the holo barista bundle, and it's what I'm wearing in my intro and outro. This is simply described as a medium brown in their crushed holographic formula, so I'm guessing it's supposed to be the most neutral of the bundle. As you guys know, I'm not the best at actually telling what these undertones are. I feel like they can just be so confusing because on the first coat, I thought it was giving more warmer tone vibes but then when I wore this on two coats it looked a lot cooler to me maybe because of all those little silver flakies being layered up but either way I think this shade is just so so beautiful this was a surprise favorite I don't exactly remember how much I liked it in the beginning but I have loved it lately this is one that I love in one or two coats so you know this video would not be complete without Island Peas Autumn. This was from last year's Harvest Collection and it is just the most magical and perfect polish to encapsulate the season. It is a super warm brown jelly base that's packed with these fiery iridescent shimmers that literally look like fall leaves. Because the shimmers are very copper and gold heavy, I think it gives the shade an overall very copper kind of color like I shared a swatch earlier on my Instagram and it almost looks orange but this definitely is still a brown in my mind and it is the brown for fall speaking of coppers the next shade I have is Island Peas Fawn from the Fairy Forest collection it is described as an earthy brown with a copper magnetic shimmer and copper flakies too so overall this definitely feels very copper especially when you do compare it to the other browns that I shared in this video but still it is just such a cozy shade that I adore so so much normally I would wear this kind of color exclusively in the fall but I think the name has conditioned me to love this in the spring because I immediately envision little baby deer frolicking in some flower fields just so precious this one has a bit more of a jelly formula so you can see some nail line on two coats you can always do a third if you want it to be more fully opaque but I don't mind the look too much I think it does look nice with the cat eye effect but obviously for island pea magnetic specifically they look super beautiful with the velvet effect they just velvetize so beautifully if that's a word which I don't think it is but you know what I mean the shimmer just moves so easily like it's brought to the top of the polish so it creates all this dimension underneath it just looks so cool so plush looking which is what you want for velvet nails and wrapping up my browns is Essie's No To Do from last year's Unguilty Pleasures that released I think in the winter time. This feels like a pretty true milk chocolate to me, but it does have a little bit of a warmer undertone, which I really love. It is just so lush, so decadent when it comes to the color, but the formula too. It is a one coater and just yum. Now moving on to my beiges and neutrals, the first one is LA Colors Western Boots, which is described as a pinkish nude, and honestly, yeah, I can agree with that. <laughs> it's definitely darker than what I would consider a nude for me, and definitely a lot more warmer, but I still find this color so beautiful and so, so flattering. I only tried LA Colors for the first time last year, but I was just so impressed with them. They have such beautiful shades beautiful colors some of the formulas are a little okay but this one I think was so lovely on just two coats alone a slightly lighter neutral I love is China Glaze's The Snuggle is Real from their Autumn Spice collection a couple of falls ago, which that whole collection was just so stunning by the way, but yeah, this one is such a standout for me because I just thought it was such a beautiful neutral. It does have a slightly warmer undertone than my skin, so it's not going to be the perfect mannequin hands neutral, but I still think it is a cozy color. The formula was super creamy and opaque. As you saw, it was pretty full coverage on the first coat alone, but it builds up beautifully and evenly on two coats, and I just love the name too. 
And going even lighter, we have Static Nails Creme Brulee, and this is described as a semi-sheer milky brown nude. So this definitely does have a bit of a squishy or milky crelly kind of formula on the first coat, and you can kind of see I didn't mix it pretty well, so there are some streaks of pigment. But if it wasn't for that, I think this definitely could work on one coat alone, or you can build it up to be more fully opaque on two coats. And I really love this shade. This is kind of like a great mannequin hands neutral for me, which I know can be so off-putting to some people. Like it kind of has this uncanny valley type of vibe but I don't know I just think this is really flattering so you'll have to let me know what you think and the last three I have are the lightest neutrals but in specialty finishes so the first one is Mooncat's Sand Viper and this is a pinky beige crelly base with a beautiful copper shimmer you guys know I've talked about this one a couple of times on my channel already I really love this shade so, so much. It's definitely super sheer, so I don't necessarily love it on one coat if it's not over a milky kind of base coat, but it does build up so beautifully on two and three coats. It is just such a beautiful, elegant kind of neutrally beige color. I guess it's not really neutral. This definitely has more of a warmer undertone to it, but I just find it so, so flattering. Like when you want a palette cleanser but it has a little bit of sparkle to it i just adore this one so much next we have the final hollow taco hollow barista shade this is haute couture and it's described as a cool ivory shade in their crushed holographic formula I think this was probably the fan favorite from that whole bundle and for good reason too. It is just super, super beautiful. It just has this really icy and elegant look to it, though I definitely would recommend swapping to the wide brush just for better, more even application. As you saw, I struggled with the first coat and kind of struggled with the second a little bit, but for the most part, it is covered up pretty well. But yeah, this one is just such a beautiful beautiful icy shade so unique to my collection i think i'm especially gonna love this in the winter time and last but certainly not least we have pebble and this is from cirque colors specifically from their speckled polishes so while i obviously do love this shade as a beige with a little bit of fun in there i do have a gripe with the description because it is described as a sheer beige pink but there is absolutely no pink in my polish mine is very much on the yellow leaning side it definitely does not compared to the website photos which is a problem that Cirque has but that is a topic for another day all that being said I still enjoy this polish for what it is I think it's just a really pretty almost creamy ivory kind of shade and I love the speckled finish and finally, here are the collages, starting with my favorite browns. This was so hard to organize. I tried to keep the cool tones in the top row and then the warmer ones on the bottom two, and then some of the creams together. I'm not sure how successful I was with this, but I did my best and I love how they all look. And I know that Kafka-esque and Brown to Earth look like dupes, but I swear they're not. And then here are my beiges and neutrals. Obviously not that many, but I still adore these. They are just staples in my collection. So you'll have to let me know which one is your favorite. So that wraps up my favorite browns and beiges. So I can't wait to hear what you think of my picks. Hopefully you enjoyed them as much as I do, because as you probably know, I have been really loving on browns this season especially the deeper richer chocolate ones so if you have any more recommendations for those please feel free to leave them down below but i would also love to know if you love wearing brown polishes whether they are the dark fudgy chocolate ones or if you stick more to like the lighter nudes and neutrals or just leave me your favorites down below so we can chat about it but thank you so much for hanging out with me today i hope you have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one Bye.